pond for Isaac, born the last day of winter. Spring arrives. The pond turns over in the cool wind, the surface I have come to know so well, where small looms over winter and water striders skate across the glass, becomes the ground. All things hidden in the black silt, all things forgotten or never known, rise to the surface, become the new pond, cool water that could fill a stone pitcher, a glass vase, a life. My child arrives. The pond turns over in the cool wind. The surface I have come to know, a quiet house and time enough to write. Weekends on the train to the city sink to the bottom. <clears throat> the water stirs, my son crowns, rings echo from his first breath, and from the cup of his hands I drink new water that could fill my life. What you have caught and held for Eli. After I have carried you to your bed for the third time and again I hear you at my study door, I pretend not to notice, busy myself with the poem I am trying to end, thinking if I don't actually see you, maybe you won't really be there, in your blue <laughs> Superman pajamas and bare feet. My body wilts over my desk, bruised from lack of sleep and the constant touch of small boys needing me bruised on the inside like a plum held high and dropped. You move along my shelves of books, hands cupped until you find what you are after. Then opening your father's cedar box, you place what you hold inside. <coughs> the lid falls with a wooden click. A dragonfly for my box, you whisper, shuffling out, pretending my chair stands empty. There's nothing there, I tell myself. No silver wings, no trapped insect picking at the brass lock. But when the pulse of the house slows, and I know you have wandered off to sleep with your fat cat and net of dreams, I crack the lid. Find what I knew I would, bags of black cherry tobacco, a book of spent matches, your father's worn pipe. But who's to say there isn't something more I drop the lid, afraid I'll be the one to let what you have caught and held escape. For my mother and her grandson, Samuel. I move through her house, calling their names, thinking they have walked to the river, the August sun heavy over the valley. The house is still. Even the, kicking, the ticking of the carved clock slows in the heat. Then I find them, my son asleep with his grandmother, her bed a small pond, their bodies two warm stones in a ring of tossed sheets. As I watch, his arm moves over his sweaty hair in a long, deep dive, his mouth open, as if calling out to her. Her smooth hands reach to touch the curve of his back, to check that he still swims beside her. Below the cool surface, he dreams of stepping off the rail of the river's bridge. She dreams of catching. This woman, this small boy, a summer fairy tale, as if walking through the thick forest into a clearing and brushing aside the green ferns and branches. I finally find what I didn't know I was even after. <clears throat>